Alright guys, so now that we have this kind of fancy crypto dashboard, it would be foolish of us to not add a ticker element right here in this area. So let's create that and see how can we go about uh, doing that. So let me minimize this. Alright, so I will come here inside my components and we will create a new file and let's call it exchange uh, rate ticker ticker .js. all right what do we do here we minimize this so I'll say export default function let's say exchange rate ticker okay so uh, the so exchange rate ticker is the parent container and then it's going to have ticker elements so these are the children that scrolls across the screen so that's the idea all right so let's return a box from this bring it in all right so let me just close the box all right so uh, we're going to give it some sx props and we'll say overflow of none hidden actually the, the reason is is when these things scroll off of the screen then the document is going to try to have a scroll bar so we want to prevent that so and then the other thing is I want to have this a position of relative just because the children will be absolute and finally let's just give it some height of 60 pixel all right now before we go further let's use it so I will come here to my main JS and we can use it here if I go up so this will go right below the uh, our header so I'll say exchange rate ticker let's see there you go so it's gonna be in this kind of area so I can close this and we can move on to here all right so what happens is I will need uh, as I said ticker elements and the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a ticker element so I can come here and I can say ticker element js and then I can say export const function ticker element props we're gonna be passing in some props whoa default okay and then I'll say return all right so we need uh, to create a um, I don't know a style component so it's a ticker element you go to styled now this one is from we all right so let's say div okay and what we want to pass is the X position right because this thing will be scrolling across the screen so that's what we're gonna pass that all right so as I said this is going to have a position of absolute okay left will be zero top will be zero the only thing that changes is the transform so it'll be translate translate whoa okay X pixel I like so and then here I can say ticker element and then you just uh, uh, I can get the children so I can say const children is equal to props right and I need to do this okay and I can say children like that and don't forget uh, so the other thing is we need to pass in that x but uh we'll do that later uh when the need comes all right so i can come here now and i can say ticker element like so and let's put something here say test save it okay so we got test and let's see if i come here and I change this X to 50 there you go that is moving and if I say minus 50 
it goes out of the screen so that's the idea we'll be changing this so that we can move this thing around the screen all right so I think we can go back here to our ticker the parent component and start adding stuff to this so let me add the what do we want to display here so we can play around with it I'm gonna add a box like so and let's just make it a display of flex okay and let's just give it some padding of one all right so and then what I will do is I'll create another box and display of flex flex direction of column and padding right of eight okay save it all right and then finally another box will say a display of flex that's it so by default the flex direction is row all right so I'll say typography okay, variant h5 and let's say we're just gonna put some number I don't know two, four, or whatever or three okay so that's the whole reason I'm doing these different boxes and flexes so that I want to achieve a certain um, style so this one is a variant of caption okay and then we'll just give it some SX so it's a color colors we're gonna bring from our color library muted and align self I want this to have a self dash end okay and what do we put so I'm gonna put Canadian currency so that's that's uh, what I, we did with the align self and then the other thing I think I should do is a little bit of too tight maybe I should do yeah alright so with that done and then I can this have this other box and what do we put inside this box we're gonna put some other typography and honestly I'm just not gonna type it it's boring so we're gonna bring it here alright so now uh, it looks ugly so we should fix it alright so I can say display of flex justify content there we go space between yay that's nice okay align items I want to have them aligned to the top and finally let's give it some color so we'll say color colors dot success so let's say this is I don't know there's a plus sign things are doing good alright and then uh, since this is a um, positive maybe it'll be wise for us to add an arrow so I can say typography again variant of caption and I can use a material UI icon I'll bring in both up and down so we could uh, use them and where was I so here I can do arrow upward icon let's see what that does there you go that's kind of big so you can say sx font size 1.125 1.125 rdm right beautiful and finally 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 we'll say typography caption the variant is caption so today there you go so that looks beautiful so now I can actually let me see I can I think take this and so if you have an array so you can just um, copy them this would be danger and I create uh, a lot of variants so and this should be arrow down there you go you got your next item so I will probably I don't know change this to 
minus just to be different and I will change this to that and this there you go so that so these are your ticker elements and now we'll have to move them across the screen so now we need to get a reference to this ticker element because we need to see the the width of it so for that you can come here and say cons ticker container ref or you can say use ref okay and then what we can do is on this ticker elements in this the sorry the, the box is the parent I can say ref equal to ticker container ref like so all right and then what we can do is we can come here and say use effect okay and as soon as we get a hold of the uh, ticker container ref then we actually can set uh, create a state we can say const you can say parent rect set parent rect use state and let's just initialize it to an empty object and then what I can do I can say set parent rect okay and we can say ticker container ref dot current dot get bounding client rect like so so let's save it uh, yes you don't do that and then we need to pass this to our ticker element so you can say parent rect is equal to parent rect uh, like so alright so that should be that so now I can go to my ticker element and we can start using it so I can come here and we can get a hold of it here you can say parent rect okay that should uh, give us that and then we need a couple of variables I guess so we can do is you can say we need to keep a I guess keep track of the progress the progress ref use ref I'll explain them when we uh, when we use them so so the, the progress ref is initially set to the width of the entire you can say um, container and then we can say const position set position okay you state all right so from we go from parent rec dot width so we're going from right to left and 2 will be 0 right so we are going from okay use ref is not defined so maybe I should do the ref alright we're going from the right side of the screen to the left but if you were to do uh, the other way then you would change this to 0 and just basically swap the two if you want to go from left to right so fairly straightforward alright so once we have the position then we also need we'll be using the um, Windows request animation frame so we need to uh, get a reference to that the so request animation animation frame use ref we're going to do that and then we also since we're modifying the X tra uh, translate X so we can uh, use a state for that okay and there's a parent rect rect dot width okay like so and finally we need to keep t track of the timestamp and this will be a ref alright so now here I can come here and I can say x to tx and they disappeared that's because they went off screen and uh, because the it's the width of the container okay and then also we need to keep track of the child so we can say const child ref is equal to use ref lots of refs and I can say 
ref okay child ref like so all right so what do we do now well uh so the first thing we do is we can come here and use our use effect use our use effect okay and so as soon as we get a hold of the child ref right once that is valid then we can do something with it so i can say set position okay and then what i want to do is i can spread the position to whatever it is but i want to change it to to minus child ref dot current dot get bounding client rect dot width okay well that and then also we're going to start our um, the animation frame so you can say window dot request animation frame now it's going to ask you for a function which we need to create so I'll just call it a step function and finally don't forget that on return we can do cancel animation frame and we need to provide it the reference all right so now of course step is not defined so we need to define it so it's a const step const step is equal to so so this function will be called uh, by this uh, request animation frame and if you want the animation to happen ag again and again you have to keep calling it from within the function but the first time every and it, every time it gets called you get the current timestamp uh, since I guess when the session started so that's that all right so, um, so that's that and now what we do is oh by the way you so you saw that I set this to minus the width if I set this to zero what will happen is the animation is going to come here and as soon as the leftmost edge touches here then it's going to go start again what I want to have happen is I want this to go beyond the screen and then start over so that's why I'm doing it this way okay so now uh, let's see so we need to come here and we can say that if previous timestamp dot current does not equal to current timestamp okay so it's like so we create a local progress variable and you can say previous timestamp dot current if we have it then basically all you do is you say timestamp minus previous timestamp dot current otherwise zero right so if we have the current value then we take the timestamp minus the previous timestamp otherwise progress is zero so so I guess zero will be when you start it and then what we do is progress ref dot current equal to mat dot round okay so we need to do a little bit of rounding on this and we can say progress ref dot current okay what's our progress minus progress over a hundred and then we can define some speed for this and then let's see so we can control how fast this animation is happening please the const speed is let's say equal to 5.0 or 5 I don't know all right so that will control uh, so basically what you're saying is if the previous t previous timestamp that current is not equal to that means we have a different value then we come here uh, we check the current value if it's available then we take the timestamp minus uh, the previous timestamp because this value will be always higher right because you're progressing in time and then you take the progress divided by 100 and you take it from the current subtracted okay and then finally with that done then you just do set tx so we want to move the stuff around the screen progress ref dot current right so that's the current value uh, and then of course uh, we need to check if uh, we should recycle this so if you don't do that it's going to just keep going forever so what we can do is we can create a function here 
and you can say const should finish or should recycle whatever you want to call it and I can say return progress ref dot current is less than position dot to as long as uh, it's less than the position dot two then I guess you continue all right well not continue sorry uh, then you just go back to the start so we say if should finish okay then progress ref dot current is equal to parent rack dot width right we set it back to the start that's what we do and then finally don't forget to do dot current timestamp and and finally this is very important you want to um, call this function again if you want this to happen over and over so step okay so if everything worked well oh here you go you got your tickers so now let's say this is going 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 beautiful if um, if I don't do this then let's see what happens I think I have enough to refresh this alright so that stopped and let's see why receive not a number for the x attribute uh, alright so this is I found that um, I'm gonna do okay let me uh, let me uncomment this I think what I have to do is I have to come here and I have to do something like ticker container ref we want to make sure we have a whole of the reference first and then we do all this so I need to move this in here let's see if I refresh there you go now that works okay and let's say if I comment this now let's start over yeah that's what I was saying you see if you don't do this then it's just gonna as soon as it hits this bottom it's gonna start over so that's why we do that so there you go here's the speed so I can control let's say I make this 20 and then it's gonna happen very fast so uh, I hope uh, you guys liked it uh, I'm just gonna go check on mobile and see how that is yes very nice Alright, so I think that will conclude this uh, ticker element and uh, I hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe and bye for now.